Chapter 8 McGuinness finally leaned back from the comm in her sparse quarters and willed herself to relax. She'd spent over an hour hooked into the station's main system, but the accessible stuff wasn't going to tell her what she needed, although truthfully, she wasn't even sure exactly what that was. Names and numbers that probably weren't even attainable unless one had a code slate for them. She could probably rascal it out given time, if she knew where to look, or what to look for. She sighed, staring at the blank screen of the outmoded personal in front of her. She trained on a piece better than this, and that had been... 15 years ago. Christ on a crutch. If someone had told her then where she'd be now, she would have laughed until she cried. Or maybe just cried. A class 3 systems tech who could be making 150 creds an hour writing forensics programs. Still in the core and stuck on some backward science station, digging for secrets. She chewed at her lower lip thoughtfully. She was no spy. She shouldn't have come, let alone re-enlisted. She could have been out six months ago, free and clear. Except if I don't do it, who will? Right, nobody would. And she would have gone on with her life, maybe the only person who could uncover the truth about whatever the hell was going on here and every day would bring fresh pain, the knowledge that she had sold her memories. She shook her head, not wanting to think about it. She was here to find out what Dr. Church was hiding, and would have to try to keep her emotions out of it. Church, or maybe Thaves, would fuck up, or maybe it would be something as simple as a misplaced document or some contraband chemical trace. She'd need to be on her toes, prepared. Between hacking and her forensics background, something would turn up. Until then, she would have to wait. Patience wasn't one of her strong suits, but she needed evidence before she could approach Crespi, and until something out of the ordinary occurred, she wouldn't know where to start. She sighed again, stood up. Orientation was still an hour plus away, where she'd been assigned station duties and set to work. Maybe she could duck into the non-com lounge and ask a few questions. The com bleated and a few lines of data appeared on the screen. McGuinness leaned over and frowned. All authorised TFC and system monitors report to stations immediately. Security breach K4 class 07. She felt her gut tighten. Technically, she wasn't authorised to do anything. Yet. But if she just happened to wander over to one of the console stations oblivious to the alert. McGuinness grabbed her temp ID and headed for the door. It was probably too much to hope for this soon, but this could be the key to it all. The event that would lead to some peace for her troubled mind and to the eventual ruin of Paul Church. Church let the drone devour about half of the slaughtered pig before reluctantly shocking it once again into submission. He liked to watch them eat. The veracity of it, the unadulterated pleasure they took in their conquests. Two heavily armed techs crept into the passage and cleared away the rest of the dripping carcass, never taking their eyes off of the fallen creature. Can't let it eat too much, he said. If it gorges in its weakened condition, it may die. Crespi seemed interested, but he still had that stubborn set to his jaw, the petulant look of a little boy who was determined not to give in. Well, that will change soon enough. I'm sure you noticed that it didn't just kill that pig. It practically swam into it. Fearful prey seems to attract aliens and stimulate them to make especially messy kills. I don't think it's a form of play exactly, but they do seem to enjoy it. Crespi swallowed hard and then nodded. He seemed uncomfortable, which was disappointing. Obviously, his emotional state was influencing his scientific mind. A problem that Church had successfully conquered decades before. It could be hard to overcome, but a true scholar would find a way in their search for the greater truth. At least he was paying attention. That was a start. Two different techs entered the labyrinth and waited for the alien to stir. One held an automatic machine rifle while the other stood unarmed. The drone hissed softly and stumbled to its feet, turning its long head slowly back and forth. 
Church tried again to invoke Crespi in the game. Care to guess which one it'll attack? Crespi hesitated, then cleared his throat. Uh, the armed man. Even as he spoke, the drone lunged for the man with the rifle, quickly and silently. The naked terror on the man's face was almost comical. The sensors kicked in, as always, dropping the haggard creature to the floor in an electric pulse of energy. Church was pleased. Good call, Doctor. An alien will always attack a perceived threat. Out of the hundreds of similar tests I've run on dozens of aliens, there has never been a single deviation from this rule. Crespi looked at him, seemingly irritated. Hundreds of tests. Dozens. What you're telling me is tantamount to a confession, Church. Church sighed inwardly, stared blandly back at him. Couldn't he see what was in front of him? This was the type of research that men like him would kill to get into, and here he was playing soldier boy for a group of paranoid brass. It was pathetic, really, that he should limit himself so, and more than a little annoying. Crespi held his gaze for a moment, then frowned and looked away. Okay, let's overlook that for the time being. You've determined some extremely simple behaviour patterns, so what's the point of all this repeat experimentation? Finally. It's not repetitious. Each time the maze is set up, new sensory equipment is built in. I'm compiling a data overview that will set a new standard of bioanalysis. Church glanced at the screen, saw Copper and that other one, Wagner, step into the alien's corridor. The creature was just beginning to move. Now you'll see something interesting, he said softly. Neither man is armed, but the one in the back is in full FITR, a telethene that induces a sense of invulnerability and increased mental strength. Truly, Copper looked like he was ready to eat the fallen creature. His head was up, his shoulders back, and he wore a slight snarl, as if daring the alien to make a move. The other man is cold sober, and as you can see, scared half out of his mind. Watch. Again, the drone pulled itself up from the floor, moved towards the two men. It barely paused before leaping for Wagner, who screamed, held up one hand as if to ward off the attack. And this time, the sensor didn't go off. Crespi watched as the drone leapt and, oh shit. Where was the electric shock? The creature was almost on top of the sober and terrified lab tech, about to rip him to shreds. The drugged man stepped forward, stared at the moving drone as if he meant to kill it with a look. The shrieking alien reached out, talons spread, and faltered stopped cold in its tracks. Only then did the flash of electric pulse fill the video screen, jolting the drone to collapse. Church was excited, practically jumping up and down. There, did you see that? Crespi looked away from the screen, where the two men were being led out by two others. The tech that the alien had almost killed was shaking uncontrollably. I'm not sure what I saw. It, it started to attack, but then... It seemed to change its mind. Not quite. First, it went for the scared man. What caused it to pause was the will of the drugged man. Church began to pace, hands behind his back. Aliens communicate with each other telepathically. They can sense fear in other animals. My working hypothesis is that they can physically see the minds of men, but cannot understand them. Crespi shrugged. I suppose that's plausible, but... But what? You just saw that alien waver during an attack. Have you ever heard of such a thing before? The man under the influence of FITR was willing the drone to stop its attack, and it did. Church had stopped in front of him, and Crespi could suddenly see something that he had somehow missed before. There was a light in the older doctor's eyes, a guttering sheen that radiated intelligence and inspiration. A light of genius. Or madness. 
Dr. Crespi, this and previous experiments indicate that a weakened alien can have its actions influenced by a human mind in an exalted state. Church paused, perhaps to let that sink in. Crespi suddenly felt far less objective than he'd wanted. God, was it possible? If what you're saying is true, he began, then hesitated. The implications? Church grinned. If it's true, I'll prove it. This research has just begun. Think of it, Crespi. Synthetic e-waves. Aliens reduced to fawning puppies at the touch of a button. Entire hives turned into petting zoos. The grin dropped a few notches, and Church turned that bland stare towards him again. But a bit too esoteric for traditional venues of research, eh? Risky. Messy. Inconclusive. Possibly even immoral. Profound potential for misuse, a pearl beyond price. Secrets. Countermanding secrets. Official smokescreens. Church innocently looked away. Even top investigative men sent to see how much can be found out. Crespi scowled. What are you saying? Church ignored the question, returned it with another. Why don't we have you coded into the bioscan now? Crespi paused, uncertain. He had been taken for some ride already, but the offer was made. He was welcome to join the research. Just watching the creature had been hard enough, but to be involved? Could he do it? The ashen, beautiful face of Katie Trask suddenly welled up into his mind, as she had been before disappearing into the darkness forever, mutilated and then killed by the obscene nest of monsters. The scent of melting rock, the smoke in his eyes, the weeks after his recovery spent with the psych module, the night terrors and the hopeless self-hatred that had taken years to overcome, the final truth that he had been unable to do any more than he had done. Could he do it? How could he not? This was big, really big, something that could finally make a difference. Church was a strange one, but the work was innovative, exciting, and potentially lethal for the alien breed. Admiral Pickman could be sent a vague report on something connected, maybe about telepathy work, not a lie exactly. But God, the dangers involved. How upfront had Church been with him? How far was he willing to go with this? One question, and he would accept. How many crew members have died during the course of your research? Church smiled, eyes still shining with that inner light. It depends on who you ask. That odd humour, almost taunting. I'm asking you. Church didn't pause, met his gaze squarely. None. Crespi studied his face for a moment, the deeply etched lines around his sharp gaze. He nodded slowly. It would be a pleasure to work with you, Doctor. Church smiled widely and nodded in return. Good. A young woman hurried over to them, her boot heels clacking loudly against the polished floor. Her expression was worried, her brow heavy. Excuse me, Colonel Dr. Church, was the specimen in K4 transferred? Her voice seemed tremulous, uncertain. Church answered slowly. Transferred? No. The woman, a forensic tech by the uniform, bit her lip, apparently deeply anxious. Something's wrong then, sir. She took a deep breath, swallowed. The door to Kennel 4 is open, and the alien is gone. <laughs>